It's Wednesday, and I haven't uploaded yet. Well, I'm technically about to, and there's three hours left of Wednesday. So, how we all doing? Today is an extended rant in the woods. I needed to get away from everything for a bit, so I figured going out and running around in the woods would probably be something that's good to do. Now, some people like videos where I rant about stuff, and other people don't. So, if you're one of those people that does not appreciate me complaining about things, um, probably watch a different one. You can just skip this. Live streams tomorrow. You can come hang out there. But I know there's a decent number of people that do enjoy rants. So we're going to talk about wheelchair accessibility and some other random stuff. I wasn't planning on going deep into this, but it just sort of happened. So anyways, here's a video and it's super long. Also, this applies to any video where I rant about something. Please watch the whole thing before you leave a comment. It takes a bit of time to get all of the information out and all of the different angles. We look at this from a few different sides. So, please don't comment until you've watched the entire rant. It's, you'll see why. You'll be, you'll be typing something and then be like, oh, never mind. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, we're back out here at the Westside Hydro Project again today. This is the, uh, I think the they call it the old Clackamas River Highway. But anyways, a couple of things we're doing out here. One, I needed a break from a bunch of stuff and people and assorted situations. So I figured, you know, this is a nice place to come. Uh, obviously, we've done a lot of videos here before, and you guys have probably seen it extensively. But the plan today is to map this and add it to Google Street View because it is not currently on there. Google has a new tool. Well, I don't know if it's new, but I just discovered it. But it's available to local guides and map editors that allows you to use specific types of 360 degree cameras that can add GPS EXIF data to the file and they will overlay it into the Street View system. So as it turns out, one of the GoPro cameras that I have is compatible with this and they, they have a plugin for the software I use for editing to uh, basically make it integratable, is that a word? <laughs> With uh, Google Maps and Street View. So anyways, we're gonna hang out out here. We're gonna run this trail one direction. I'm not sure what the battery life is gonna be like on the other camera with the GPS fired up, but we'll see. The other cool thing is, because I have to record the footage anyways, that means I'm gonna have a nice 360 spherical video of this entire trail. Now, I've kind of been wanting to do something like this for a while, and we actually tried it a long time ago, and well, it wasn't 360, but anyways, what that's gonna allow me to do is publish a video to YouTube that allows you guys to pan around and look at anything you want while we're running down the trail. It's full 360 degree video. So anyways, I'm gonna get some stuff set up here. I've got my, my coffee, of course. It's about noon right now. And I don't think it's supposed to be too hot today, but we'll see. Okay, so this is the setup we're gonna be using. It's an extended pole with a battery in it. And we've got the camera on top here with kind of a weird little adapter arrangement. But this thing extends up and I'll be able to hold it way above my head. So let's turn on the GPS on this thing, if I remember how to do that. Uh, let's see. Okay, apparently you have to use the app to turn on GPS mode, so. Let's fire that up. And hopefully it doesn't overlay that spinometer thing. I don't really want it doing that. I've never actually connected the GPS on this before, so I don't know exactly how you know when it's connected or what exactly is going on. Um, there isn't really any indication on the screen. So, so let's uh, give this a little clean. The last thing we want is smudges on our camera. Yeah, in case you're not aware, the way these cameras work is they have two cameras, one on each side, and they both capture like a 182 degree image, and then the camera can stitch them together into an actual 360 image. So let me turn on preview here and I should be able to show you this. All right, I think you can see the screen there, but I can pan around and look at everything. There's me, there's the door, there's what's to my right, there's me leaning over. Hey, camera. <laughs> yep. Here's our setup. Camera's on the, on the end of a long pole. So I'm just gonna hold this thing up like this and we're gonna go for a rip and see what happens.
Well, it appears as though this is where our journey ends. There's an excavator reaching all the way across the road on both sides and a lot of dump trucks and stuff. So I guess we will head to the nearest shade. I'm gonna check and see if this camera actually did what it was supposed to. And um, yeah, the, uh, the end of the trails may be only, I don't know, quarter mile or half mile down there. So actually here we've gone, uh, yeah, we've gone 3.2 miles and it's 3.5. So that's pretty much most of it, I think. Um, by the way, one of the reasons I wanted to do this was having trails like this on Street View allows other people that use mobility devices or wheelchairs or whatever to actually preview the trail and see if it's something they can find accessible. You know, see if there's any hills or whatever, things like that. But by the way, this is North Fork Reservoir right here. Um, yeah. Oh, my hand's a little stiff. I probably should have mounted this somehow. Holding that for all that time was... Well, let's see, what time is it? 12.56? Yeah, so it's like three miles, six miles an hour, 30 minutes. I think that's how math works. <laughs> okay, it looks like we did in fact actually capture a 360 footage. There you can see me looking around there. Um, see the trail and everything. So yeah, seems like a thing. Uh, I wanna make sure this first file actually worked. I tried playing it a minute ago and it was like locking up. Okay, we're good. Cool. Ah, go away, bees. No, stop it, go away. No, no, go away. All right, it listened. Yeah, I still have absolutely no idea how to tell if the GPS data is attached, so I guess we will just head back and I'll load it onto the computer and hopefully it's good. Um, man, it's so nice out here. Look at this. At least if we could back up a little bit so we can actually see the reservoir. Yeah, see? Nice. Yeah, so that construction up there, um, I could probably ask them to like, let me go around or whatever and I'm sure it would not be a problem. Oh framing. I'm sure it would not be a problem at all if I wanted to get past there, but I'm going to turn around and go right back through there. And the whole point of going through there is to record everything for Street View. And I don't think we need a bunch of diggers. <laughs> Immortal, immor immortalized? Immemorialized? I don't know. On Street View forever. So anyways, mostly I just don't want to activate. I, mostly I just don't want to interface with any humans right now. <laughs> Like I said, this is just a break for me today. I wanted to get outside and what was it I said last time? Hear the birds and the crickets and <laughs> whatever else. Um, so anyways, uh, oh, battery update. How are we doing here? I can't really see it. It says full, we've gone 3.3 miles. I still have the new Volt Pro batteries in here that were from the uh, brand new M3 that were kind of questionable. I think they've gotten a little bit better the most I was getting last time I did any sort of range like this on these batteries was about six and a half miles. So we'll see how this goes. I, I think they've been cycling in. I don't know. The Volpro batteries seem like kind of an enigma or hit or miss or I don't know. Some of them seem all right. Some people have had super early failures for no reason at all. Um, the ones this chair came with are two and a half years old and still work fine. I just decided to swap them out because it'd be nice to have new ones. But then these ones are not very good, so I don't know. I'm blathering. All right, I'm gonna, oh, coffee. Yes. Oh, the lid came off. Go back on. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go that way. And this should be a lot easier of a camera rig to hold. Um, by the way, um, if you do wind up watching the 360 video, if it does work out, you'll notice people saying hi to me and whatnot, and I don't return any, or I don't say anything. But if you look, I smile and I nod. So I'm not completely ignoring people. I feel the need to say that, because comment section. All right, let's go. Anyways, since in theory we're not you're using this one for Street View, I can talk. Our battery's at 31%, so I get the feeling it's gonna die before we get back. But anywho. I'm just gonna record with this until we, uh, until we, till it 
doesn't record anymore. I don't know, birds. So this is this area is closed. There are gates at both end, both ends. Um, this is the North Fork Dam right here. This road is closed off to the public, but it's still used obviously for employees and maintenance and all that stuff. The other thing I don't know about is the wind noise. Was cameras supposedly set up for automatic wind rejection? I don't know. Oh, you know what I should do? Uh, nah. So another thing I'd like to do is just get some 360 like scenery scapes. Right. Oh, there's the caster flutter. First time I've had that today. Actually, first time I've had it in like a month. Anyways, I was thinking it would be cool to set up a camera like all day and capture stuff like, you know, well, the spillway is not open right now and you're looking through a chain link fence, but you know, just set the camera up somewhere and leave it going for like, I don't know, six hours or sunrise to sunset or something like that. So, uh, is this where I rant? Okay, sure. Um, so yesterday I went to this food cart place. Um, it's in this town called, well, I'm not going to do that. I don't know. Anyways, um, <laughs> I went to this food cart place to meet up with a couple of friends. Hadn't been there before. The place is brand new. It's like less than a year old. And um, I show up there. They got this brand new like brick building. It's pretty cool. They've got like, I don't know, 20 food trucks or something. Then like a huge indoor like eating area and, and a bunch of stuff. I'm just going to pan around randomly. Um, oh yeah, there's a spot where water flows uphill. Anyways, so I'm like, oh, I've had a lot of McDonald's coffee and I'm here early and I'm waiting for my people. I'm gonna go use the bathroom. <laughs> um, yeah, so find the bathrooms, go inside. In the men's room, they just had like two stalls and one was slightly larger than the other, no urinals or anything. And I swing open the door on the larger stall and immediately realize I can't fit my power chair in there and close the door. Well, I might be able to nose straight in and then somehow reach behind me and close the door. But there's no way you can get anywhere near the toilet. And the grab bars are on the other side, mounted to the side of the stall, which if any of you have ever seen stalls, they're not structurally like sound at all. And I was like, huh, okay, this is kind of weird. And it's like super busy there because there's hundreds of people and only like two toilets in each bathroom, you know, men's and women's. So I was like, eh, okay. There was like people waiting and stuff. So I just like went back out. On the way out, I noticed too that the sink was kind of set up. They had the water heater underneath it. And like, I could kind of get to it at an angle, you know, and get my feet underneath there. But I'm just sitting here thinking like, this is a brand new building. How is this not up to code? Like ADA code. It's one of those things that just drives me absolutely insane. It's brand new. Now, obviously, you know, I. Feel like I complain a lot, or at least I have a lot of videos of me talking about stuff, but this is one of those things that just drives me absolutely bonkers. It's a brand new building. It was inspected by that city and got an occupation permit. How is this possible? Um, so I looked around on the building, trying to find some contact info. I found this email address printed on the side of the building, so I sent an email to that saying, hey, just kind of curious, you know, why don't you guys have an ADA bathroom? Sure, you put a wheelchair logo on it, but that doesn't mean it's usable and actually accessible. Um, it was immediately returned back as undeliverable. So I left a review on Google Maps and they just replied back today. They're like, oh, this, what, uh, what did they say? Uh, they basically said it was accessible and it was required by the city. Um, anyways, last night I tried to find their contact info online and I just filed an online code compliance complaint. It'll be real interesting to see, yeah, it will be real interesting to see what the city says. Now, someone brought up an interesting point. Maybe the place was inspected before they finished building it or completely kidding it out. You know, cause sometimes as they're building places, inspections are done early or they're gonna like change stuff later on or whatever. So that could have been the case and then they finished building the place out after it was inspected. But I don't know. So we'll see what happens there. It's uh, yeah and I, I can't remember right off what the reply was, but the tone of it was kind of like, you know, oh, oh, that was the thing. 
They said nobody has ever complained about it before. That is how you get me in friggin' scorched earth mode. Say that no one's complained about it. You know why no one complains about stuff? Because it's a huge pain. And then you get brushed off by the people and it's not worth your time. Yes, I'm animated. So this is one of the reasons, like I don't go around and complain about every single place I go to. There's just certain things that I don't let go in places like that. And like I said, especially brand new buildings. The reason I do that is because other people are not necessarily gonna take the time to do it. And that's the thing, like I'm spending a whole bunch of time and energy and I'm like, you know, ranting about this right now. Sure. <laughs> I'm here ranting about this right now, but you know, I'm like talking to the world about it so I can share my frustrations with everyone. Cause how many times have you been somewhere that's not accessible and you're like, dang, I wish there was something I could do about this. Or maybe you know there is something you could do about it, but it's gonna take a lot of battling people and yelling and, I mean not yelling, but it's gonna take a lot of battling of people and you know, trying to figure stuff out and following up and phone calls and emails and blah, 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 whatever. So I figure I might as well do that. And in the process, I can kind of show that, you know, sometimes you can get things changed. There's been a few times where construction projects have been triggered because of complaints I made and it helps out everyone. So I'm not just saying, oh, I'm a guy in a wheelchair, you know, I need to like have access, you know, it's me, 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 me. No, no, no. This is, hey, there's a lot of people, like, I think it's, it's like 11% of the population of Oregon uses mobility devices. Like, that's not an insignificant amount. So, you know, I'm sure there's been people in there before. Like, so that bathroom, the way it's set up, I have a picture of it. Obviously cameras play tricks. It looks like there's a ton of room in there. If you're in a manual chair, you could probably be okay as long as you don't have to transfer the toilet. You know, if you're using catheters, you could probably get up close to it or whatever. Um, like, it'd be workable. I mean, to, to be honest, I wound up using that bathroom. What I did was I dumped out the rest of my McDonald's coffee, went straight into the stall, reached behind me, got the door closed, and then just cast into the McDonald's cup and then dumped it in the toilet. TMI, I don't know, whatever. So I did make it work because I had to, but that's not the point. You know, it, it's like when, when you'd say to someone, hey, you're parked in this disabled spot and you're taking up all the space or you're parked across three of them. So you go park somewhere else, then you get out and on your way into whatever that business is, you stop by and tell them, hey, uh, you guys shouldn't be here. Like you're blocking access. And then their reply is something like, well, you managed to park and get out of your van, didn't you? Ah, spider webs. Ah, they're flying through the air. That kind of response, that's when I just have to walk away. Because there's no talking to those people, there's no doing anything about it. But, well, hang on. I, there's no cell signal right here, but I think I've got the, I think I've got the email here. Uh, let me pull this up. Uh, whoop, almost dropped my phone. All right, here we go. Um, can I do this without doxing these people? Okay, so here's the email. Well, I'd like to read my original review, but it doesn't show in here and I don't have cell signal, so. A uh, response from the owner. This is ADA compliant and was requ required by the city. I'm sorry it did not meet your needs, but this is honestly the first complaint we have had on this matter. So let's break that down a little bit. Yeah, I forgot the microphone's on the side. So let's break that down a little bit. It is ADA compliant. Now this could be one of those things where someone built it, you know, kind of like going back to the portable toilets in the restrooms. Someone said, hey, we need a wheelchair accessible thing and they delivered a thing with a wheelchair logo on it. And to someone that doesn't use a chair, it may appear to be wheelchair accessible. And they may just completely not understand that it's not ADA compliant. So there's that factor. Um, so maybe they don't know. But this is why code compliance exists and why the city comes out and inspects things. Now again, like I was saying earlier, maybe the bathrooms weren't finished yet and they somehow passed inspection before that was done, which I would argue is not the way to go about things because if you walk away from an empty room and say, yeah, this is wheelchair accessible and then they continue building it, yes, yeah, stuff like this happens. So the fact that they're saying this is compliant, maybe they do believe it is. 
And then the, oh, we're sorry this didn't meet your needs. Okay, once again, this is why the ADA exists. It's the bare minimum. Here comes a truck. It's the bare minimum for what most people using mobility devices and wheelchairs will be able to use without a problem. That's why it exists. Hang on. So, oh, we're sorry it didn't meet your needs. Like, you know, I'm, and I'm kind of reading into this. I'm, I'm trying to cover all the angles, but it's like, oh, you, you poor person in a wheelchair, your life is so hard and you're the only one that's had an issue with this, you know, like no one else has complained, blah, blah, blah. So once again, you know, devil's advocate, maybe they think it's accessible and maybe they think I'm complaining about something that's supposedly wheelchair accessible. So we'll give them that. Once again, this is why inspections exist. <laughs> and then the whole, this is the first time anyone's complained about it. That's the one that drives me insane. Because what am I supposed to say to that? Okay, no one's complained before. Why do you think they haven't complained? Well, one, they'll get brushed off like I'm getting brushed off. Once again, maybe you don't know that you're brushing me off. Um, to me, an appropriate response to that would be, oh gosh, we had no idea. We thought it was compliant. You know, we thought it met ADA code. Let, let's see if we can figure this out, you know? Um, that's the thing. If you don't know something, I mean, doctors, I'm going all over the place here. Doctors have a problem with this too. They don't like saying, I don't know. I mean, you know, a lot of times, obviously not every single one, but like they have a problem saying, I don't know. The correct response is, I don't know, let's find out. Or I don't know, let's talk to someone that's smarter than me. By the way, <laughs> I'm all over the place today. My Twitter username that is at everyone is dumb. That has nothing to do with intelligence or calling people stupid. Um, there's a story about that. Ask me about it in the comments or in a live stream or something. I'll explain it. It's actually pretty funny. It has to do with buying an internet connected GPS back in like 2011 or something. But anyways, so yeah, people don't complain because it's a huge pain. And who do they talk to? I could not find any contact info for, this pe for these people. They had an email address on the side of the building that didn't work. I went to their website. I combed through that whole thing. I went to all their social media. There's no emails or phone numbers. <coughs> All they had was like applications for new food carts and new vendors. Um, I thought maybe, hey, I could just submit something through here. But they want like business tax ID numbers and all kinds of stuff in there. And um, yeah, so Google Maps is the only way I was able to get a response out of these people. Now, I can't really reply to them again. You leave a review, they reply. That's the end of the transaction. You can go back and edit it, but that doesn't mean they'll necessarily see it. And I've gone to war with people before editing comments and stuff. And to be honest, it's kind of a waste of time. Like, there's at least one or two of you that know about a previous situation that I just finally gave up on. It finally turned into this whole thing where it's like, okay, I'm being the douchebag here. It doesn't matter that you're not accessible. This whole back and forth thing needs to stop. So what I do when I run across something like this is I give them a chance to reply or communicate with them based on what they say. Maybe they'll fix it, you know? And I'm, you know, I'm cordial about it. And I'm not like yelling or screaming or anything. I'd just be like, hey, so I noticed you don't have ADA compliant bathrooms. Uh, kind of curious what's going on there. Please advise, something like that. But in this case, you know, after getting that email back that didn't go through, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go to the city. And going back to the thing where maybe they don't know, this could be entirely the city's fault and the inspector's fault. So moving to that, there's another town across on the other side of the Portland metro area. A number of years back, there was a gym I went to that had some accessibility issues with the showers and the pool and stuff like that. Once again, brand new building, less than a year old. And it turned out to be, they thought they were following the code. And the inspector said, yeah, we're good. So I got a hold of the city and I was like, hey, um, What's going on here? How did this place get an occupation permit? You clearly have these issues. And, you know, they weren't the most serious issues in the world. But the point is, when I talk to the uh, the city code compliance office, they're like, hey, um, so if our inspector signs off of it, that means it's good. And I was like, okay, well, the inspector didn't do their job then because this ain't right. And to summarize, basically, if it's been inspected, at least in that other city, and 
they've signed off on it, you can't challenge it. I mean, you can, but you're gonna have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars as a lawyer and go after the city. And good luck finding a lawyer that's gonna go after the city that they live and operate in. Um, that's a whole thing. Hmm. There's that other spillway. Um, so as it turns out, you know, in a lot of major cities, if it's been inspected and approved, you can't do anything about it because you can't go back on what the inspector said. Because if the inspector is found to not be doing their job, that means everything they else, that means everything else they have inspected also can potentially be null and void. So you're basically challenging years and years of work and how many inspections that inspector has done. And that ain't gonna happen. Like I said, you can do it. Like someday when I have all that money and nobody else, like, so, yeah, someday when I have all the money in the world, yeah, I'm gonna do stuff like this. And, you know, go after him and be like, hey, what's up? You screwed this up. I don't care if it like challenges everything else. I'm not talking about other things. I'm talking about this specific spot right here. <laughs> so anyways, I'm awaiting a reply. Well, I don't know if the code compliance officers are going to reply. Actually, you know what? When we get back to the end of this trail where the van's at, and where I have cell signal, I am going to call them and see if my complaint has come through on their desk yet, just to see what's going on. Just wasn't sure if that showed up in your guys' system or not yet. Yep, when, when you go back to when uh, the plans were approved, that would be almost three years ago. So I don't know what, I don't know what it's got now, and we don't have, we don't have reason to, uh, we can't enter and do anything retroactively. It's, uh, it's again, it just drives me nuts. And the other thing too, is like I mentioned this before, when you have a building with an entrance that has a door that's not power operated, why is there a wheelchair logo on it? There's some of these things that I get irrationally upset about. And like I said, it's the wheelchair logo on a manual door brand new buildings that are clearly not wheelchair accessible. And, uh, I don't know, Arby's, Kid Rock, whatever. Oh, and sheets that don't quite fit the bed. Oh, and food that's too hot to eat and you have to stare at it and watch it cool before you can eat it. But anyways, there's a rant. How, we've been ranting about that for like two and a half miles now. But anyways. <sighs> so yeah, I, I get frustrated with this stuff. So we're, we're, we're out here in the woods. Yes, the microphone's on the other side. You probably can't hear me very well when I point the camera at my face. So I figured, come out here and blah, 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 whatever. Record some stuff, do some things. Uh, is there anything else to this rant? I don't know, probably. I'm not thinking of it right now. Uh, let's get over here in the shade and check on our batteries real quick. Um, according to this, we're down one green bar and we've gone 5.3 miles. So previously, with these particular batteries, um, what are you gonna say? Oh, I'll get close to six miles and they start dropping off pretty fast. Now I have cycled these a whole bunch and technically according to the spec sheet, which isn't really a spec sheet, but according to that paperwork that comes with the Volt Pro batteries, it can take up to 50 cycles or more before the batteries get up to their full capacity. So, Maybe these just weren't broken in yet? I don't know. Yeah, they did sit in a chair for about a month, but they kept it charged. So, I don't know, whatever. Um, look, it's a pine cone. Multiple pine cones. <laughs> I promise I'm not going insane. I'm just frustrated and decompressing. And apparently telling the whole world why I'm upset. So anyways. There's a rant for you. Um, the battery on this camera is getting low. Luckily, it has its own built-in cable that I can plug in. Actually, here, can we plug this in without breaking everything? Oh, I've been ranting for 18 minutes. Hang on, I'm gonna stop the camera so I don't risk losing the footage, hang on. Okay, we're plugged in and charging. Oh, it just just now died. Did you catch that? We're at 0%. And it shut down. All right, cool. Well, that thing's probably full of footage. Oh. 
Let me jam this in here like so. All right, I think, I think that should hold it. Um, yeah, we're most of the way back to the van. I don't know if this is gonna be a video I actually post or a member video or a second channel video. I don't know. People get all weird when I rant about stuff and start telling me, oh, hey, well, all you have to do is this and you don't have to be a jerk about stuff and blah, 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 and this and that. Um, I can't go into too much of the details, but allow me to give you an example of how Portland is uniquely ridiculous. So these are hypothetical events, we'll just say because reasons. Someone I may or may not know, may or may not have been on the local transit system here, which shall remain unnamed, and the driver didn't strap down his chair properly and took a corner and his chair fell over and this person broke their back. And then, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm skipping over certain details because there's like, I don't know how much is supposed to be public, but anyways. Um, Later on, when lawyers and stuff were involved, the rumor was that this guy said, no, you don't need to feel safe because you don't pay as much as the other passengers. And then this person said it again on the record. Um, uh, <laughs> so I have personally gotten winged by a bus on multiple occasions there was one that I think I mentioned. Um, it was in some other town outside the metro area. But I'm crossing this street. I, it's not like, you know, the bus is at a stop sign and we, we go at the same time. I'm halfway across the first of three lanes. This bus slows down, rolls through a stop sign, turns left, and wings the back of my chair with their mirror. Then doesn't even stop. Um, I got the information off the bus. Called the police in that small town. I was like, hey, here's what happened. They came out and looked at me, got the photos and stuff. And then they're like, yeah, that is not okay. And they're like, are you sure the driver knew that they hit you? I'm like, oh, trust me, they knew. I started yelling and making a big old fuss. And they looked right at me and then they did not stop and kept going. Two days later, this police officer calls me back and says, hey, um, so they will acknowledge that that bus was in that place at that time but they will not give me any of the footage from the seven cameras that are on the bus. They won't divulge the name of the bus driver and they won't say if they're being punished or what's going to happen to them, if anything. The cop was pissed. He's like, I don't know how TriMet's allowed to operate like this. Like, the other drivers arguably doing criminal activity by hitting pedestrians, let alone one in a friggin' wheelchair, after running a stop sign and they're just like, yeah, no, sorry, you can't do anything to the police? Like, yeah, anyways, the cop was like, hey, I just wanted to give you an update. He's like, I'm pissed off about this. I'm gonna figure out what's going on. About a week goes by, he calls me again. And he's like, hey, um, so I don't know what's going on here. Or no, he, he didn't tell me over the phone. He was like, hey, are you gonna be in the little downtown area? I was like, yeah. He's like, meet me at this one spot. I'm like, okay. So I go over there and he's like, hey, so I don't know what's going on, but I've been told to let this go. I was like, what? He's like, no. He's like, this is just a courtesy thing. I am not happy about this situation, but I have been instructed to not pursue this any further. So anyways, Portland's an interesting place. And th th those are like, so the TriMet, the transit company here is run by a quasi governmental agency that's actually privately funded, but also gets federal money. So anyways, government entities around here are super interesting. Um, not to mention all the people that are around. Um, you know, I'm still surprised quite often by, you know, other humans that are decent. You know, not, not everyone is horrific, but, you know, any of my friends I know that are in a power chair don't like going out in public alone or to the grocery store. You gotta have someone else in a wheelchair, someone there to run interference with you. There's just always problems. And most people I know now, like even the most charismatic people I know that don't care about anything and are just like, whatever, this is like, 
I don't care what you say to me, it's not a big deal. Even they now get their groceries delivered. So anyways, beautiful scenery. And once again, recording videos is like my therapy session. And also, I'm sure there's some of you out there watching this that have had similar experiences. And you're like, oh my God, I've had the same thing happen. I thought it was just me. No, you're not alone. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, we're just about back to the parking lot here. Anyways, I'm gonna shut the camera off. I'm gonna head back to the bus. Uh, air conditioner's been running in there, so it should be good. Oh, snap, I keep forgetting I have freaking coffee. Mmm, coffee. Mm. Oh, we have cell signal right here. Oh, the lead came off again. Let me whip out my phone here and I'll read you the review they left. Or the review I left on this um, particular place. Let's see, contribute. So I was a little bit kind of, I mean, I was, well, here, I'll just read it. How is it possible that this brand new building doesn't have wheelchair accessible bathrooms? Yes, there's a bathroom with a wheelchair logo on the, with a wheelchair logo on it but it's nowhere close to meeting ADA code. If you use a manual chair, you'll probably be able to use it, but there's no room to get in front of the toilet or even close to the stall door once you're inside. It amazes me in this time where inclusivity and tolerance abounds that this is even possible. It's kind of a hot take, definitely, but I punctuate it by you know giving some useful info, like, hey, if you're in a manual chair, you're probably okay, but if you're using a power chair, you may not be able to get into this bathroom easily. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna put the camera away before I get near all these people up there and they're wondering why I'm filming them and stuff. So anyways, um, I'll see you whenever I turn the camera back on, I guess. <laughs> We're back at the van. Update on the battery situation. We have all of our green bars back. We've gone 6.1 miles. Maybe these batteries are okay and it just took them a long time to cycle in. I don't know. Keep an eye on it though. Oh, I did, however, also leave my cameras turned off. That obviously is going to use a little bit of power, but not enough to run the, well, basically cut the range of the chair in half. It doesn't use that much power, but um, interesting. Well, it's several hours later and I've been working on copying and processing footage and all that stuff. Turns out when you record really long videos, GoPros have this issue. When the file gets over four gigs in file size, it generates a second file and a third file. But the problem is they're the same file name. So when you try to copy them onto the computer, the computer gets confused. So I had to export some of the files to my phone and now the phone, well, when, you, when it outputs through the app to the phone, it puts it in a different file format that can be over four gigs. So now I'm airdropping one of the files from here to this computer. And we're simultaneously copying some rendered footage over to the editing computer. And this computer is significantly better at re-rendering the GoPro 360 footage into something flat. That's like, you know, 1080 instead of spherical. And the software is optimized for these newer machines. So anyways, I'm feeling a lot better now. With the idiots at the gas station and running over the lift and all that. Just kind of put your head down and get some work done. Oh, and I'm watching the show Elementary. It's an older show, but pretty good. It's about a Sherlock Holmes and a Gene Watson that are, uh, well, anyways, check it out on IMDb. Maybe I'll put a link down below if I remember. It's still ridiculously nice weather outside, so that's kind of cool. I think this is supposed to continue for you know, the rest of the week, maybe into next week. I don't know, summertime and stuff. Anyway, it's time to get some food. I'm gonna make some stuff. I actually had groceries delivered because, you know, talked about that earlier. But anyhow, I will be back in a little bit and yeah, things are happening. Yay. I think we're gonna call that good for a video. The thing with the guy at the gas station, yeah, he ran over my lift and yeah, it did get damaged, but it took me like two minutes to fix just by bending something with a wrench. I, the amount of, mm, I don't even know the word to use. We'll just say it wasn't worth attempting to talk to that particular person. 
because I didn't want to get arrested. <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah, all that aside, that's been a few hours ago now. I've been working away on stuff and things are good. I'm fine. It's just sometimes you got to get away, go out to the woods, do whatever. Um, fly zapper again. I think there's already been enough rambling in this video, so I will catch you guys tomorrow on the live stream and hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. <laughs>